Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Here comes the cold front that will affect us starting tomorrow with scattered thunderstorms. You already have a level one risk. I'll show you who will be most affected and how long this pushes through during the weekend. I'm breaking news in Raleigh. I'm live at the scene of this serious crash involving three vehicles, including a UPS truck. I'll walk you through the details of this investigation. In another active scene, a man is dead after a shooting on Guest Road in Durham. More officers just arrived there in the last half hour, more than nine hours after that shooting happened. A tornado outbreak leaves devastation behind in Iowa. An entire community leveled during the powerful storm. That area about an hour west of Des Moines, uh, the damage just absolutely devastating. That storm system will be headed our way come the holiday weekend and we'll explain what that means for us. Good morning, everyone. We have a beautiful sunrise mm. for you this morning. I'm Renee Chu. I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for making us part of your Wednesday. We're three for three this week, mm. I think, in sunrise. And gorgeous sunrises, yeah. Really good. Our luck may run out tomorrow. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center. Those winds have shifted. We're going to get some clouds coming in. We will. We'll see afternoon and evening thunderstorms starting tomorrow all the way through the holiday weekend. we we'll take a look at Franklinton this morning and it is beautiful. That sun's going to pop up over the horizon here in a few minutes and uh, just start a beautiful day. Our temperatures are in the mid 60s in the triangle and we're at 59 for our dew point. Boy, when that dew point is in the 50s this time of year, it really feels comfortable. So it's a nice one out there this morning. 62 in Southern Pines, 58 in Goldsboro, 55 Roxboro, 60 in Rocky Mount and Wilson. It will get hotter faster today. We're going to see a southerly wind instead of a northeasterly wind. So so we'll be in the mid 80s by lunchtime and we'll see a high near 90 this afternoon. But today stays dry, unlike tomorrow. Tomorrow, that cold front gets close enough to us to start to pop up some scattered thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. We should have a nice quiet start to the day, but we'll end up with some scattered thunderstorms. And new this morning, we have a level one risk for severe storms from Fayetteville northward, with damaging wind being the biggest threat. I'll walk you through the rest of the weekend and show you when it's most likely to be stormy. Coming up, Ken. In 601, Elizabeth, we continue to follow that breaking news of that serious crash that Laura just mentioned in our headlines on East Millbrook and Atlantic Avenue. Uh, Laura Levine is right there on the scene this morning. And Laura joins us live to let us know exactly what's happening now as you set the scene for us, Laura. <laughs> A very serious crash here, Ken. In just the past five minutes, I spoke with an employee off camera here at this gas station. He saw the crash, traumatized by what he saw behind me. You can take a look just in, by the significant damage that we're seeing, that it is a very serious situation. This is CCBI now. They just arrived here in the past 30 minutes, taking photos of some of that damage. This vehicle, just one of three, uh, mangled beyond recognition. I mean, not only are we seeing a lot of debris, a lot of grass, a uh, glass, scattered across this road, but we're also seeing car parts all over this area. Behind this vehicle, there is a pickup truck that was involved in this crash as well, seeing significant damage there. And then the UPS truck carrying two trailers. That truck does not have any damage. It's important to mention that less than a mile from here, there is a UPS facility. So a very busy route here for those UPS drivers who frequent this area. A lot of traffic is picking up within this area right now. Police having to turn people around because they're kind of trying to make their way through cutting through this uh, gas station so really a traffic nightmare for a lot of people at this time ken i know you have information and details on how folks can get around this area yeah laura levine live with that traffic accident uh, no easy way to get around as you can see from our sensors uh, uh, atlantic avenue is beginning to back up the best alternative east west route may be spring forest road as well so keep that in mind but try to avoid that area at east milbrook and atlantic avenue we've been monitoring uh, wade avenue this morning for the last hour so uh, this this section of Wade Avenue near the interchange was closed for quite some time, but now it's completely reopened, which is really a good thing. Elsewhere in the Triangle, all the major routes are delay free at this hour. More breaking news for following this morning. Guess Road in Durham remains closed this morning after a shooting there last night that left a man dead. That shooting happened in a business parking lot near West Club Boulevard about 830 last night. It's right near the entrance to the old Northgate Mall. Nick Berlin is there in the WRL breaking news tracker and Nick police have been there almost 10 hours now. That's right, Jeff. But in the last 30 minutes or so, we've seen police and investigators focus much of their search on this business parking lot behind me. I'm going to get behind the camera just so I can show you what we're looking at. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in here, and you're gonna see uh, investigators huddled around that car, and also take a look at this white sedan with the doors open. We saw investigators actually searching through it with flashlights and taking pictures, and it appears this is the parking lot where that man was shot at 8:30 last night. Uh, we do know that when police arrived here at 8:30, they did find that man shot in the business parking lot. Like I said, they said that he died here and. Uh, uh, throughout the morning, we saw dozens of crime scene markers uh, as well as crime scene tape blocking off the road. At this point in time, we're still trying to learn from Durham police if they know who fired their gun last night. I'm going to stay on top of that. Reporting live in Durham, Nick Perlin, WRL News. This morning, utter devastation in Iowa. We're expecting to get an update on the number of people killed in this small city of Greenfield. This drone video shows what's left after a tornado destroyed that community. Authorities say multiple people are dead there. We don't have a specific number yet. Another person died in a community about 30 miles away during yesterday's tornado outbreak. A curfew is in place in Greenfield, Iowa, while search and rescue crews work. People will be allowed to return at 8 this morning, our time. Those who survive say they are worried about their neighbors. Devastating. I've lived here all my life. I'm just praying that everybody was safe, everybody's safe and nobody got hurt. The National Weather Service says there were 20 reports of tornadoes across Iowa yesterday. This week, UNC's Board of Governors is expected to eliminate diversity, equity, and inclusion policies. Today, we're hearing from a state lawmaker who is underlining the importance of these programs. WRL's Kelsey Coffey is on NC State's campus this morning for us. Kelsey, these policies have been in place for years at schools in the UNC system. Jeff, they have this morning. We'll hear from students, lawmakers, and business leaders about what getting rid of DEI could mean for our state. And the decisions that are made in this building, Winslow Hall, here on NC's campus, could change very soon. This is the building where NC State's Office for Diversity, and Equity, and Inclusion is located. 17 colleges and universities across the state would be impacted by this policy change. UNC is one of the most notable. Not only could DEI goals and initiatives be removed, several DEI-related job positions are on the line. Representative Maria Servana is holding a news conference today about the board's decision. She was one of the first Asian-American women to become a state representative in 2022. Her message to the Board of Governors today. Have an open mind to hear beyond the narrative and really hear how this has been benefiting people from, from people who are directly being affected. The Board of Governors is expected to make their decision about this tomorrow, and that news conference is scheduled for today at 930. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. A bill that would make wearing a mask in public a crime has hit a wall in the state house. Republicans said they won't sign off on it after it was passed by the Senate. State law currently allows you to wear them for health reasons because of an exception made during the pandemic. Some Senate Republicans want to get rid of the exception. They say protesters and criminals are using masks to hide their identity. House Republicans say the exception should stand. The Speaker's office says the House will vote today not to agree to the Senate's changes. I'm Chris Levengood here in the WRL Live Center, keeping an eye on reaction from a significant update that broke within the past three hours. Norway, Ireland, and Spain saying they will recognize Palestinian statehood, and that could happen by May 28th. That's next week. This is happening as the leaders are saying they're hoping this brings about a peaceful resolution to a conflict that has raged for more than 75 years, but it appears that Israel's um, leader is not quite seeing it this way because it says that Israel immediately ordered back its ambassadors from Norway and Ireland. And so what we're doing here in the Life Center, we're watching very closely to see what the Biden administration is saying on this because uh, it's reasonable to question what are the implications as it relates to us, seeing as Norway and uh, Ireland, or uh, Norway and Spain are our allies. I've been watching on the White House's website to see if there's any sort of briefing. Still early, haven't quite seen an update yet, but I have seen an update this morning regarding the press President canceling uh, student loans for about 160,000 borrowers. And I'll have a little bit more on that story here in a couple of minutes in the WRL Live Center.
Two people are out of their home after a fire in Moore County. Crews responded to Forest Lake Lane off Pine Hill Road, north of Pinehurst last night. They found a mobile home fully engulfed. Firefighters were able to knock that fire down within minutes, but as you can see, the home was gutted. No one was hurt. The Red Cross is helping those people who live there. Teachers and school staff are calling on Wake County leaders to add more for schools in the coming year's budget. Wake County school employees made their voices heard at last night's public hearing on the spending plan. The county's proposed budget is about $14 million short of what the school system says it needs. County commissioners will meet for a work session Thursday to consider any changes to the budget proposal. They're expected to vote on the budget on June 3rd. A class of Wake County students is waking up graduates this morning. The first graduation ceremony of the season happened last night. Wake STEM early college students walked the stage at May Mandy Hall. This evening, Wake Early College of Health and Sciences and Nightdale High School students will graduate. Most high schools in the district will hold their graduations the first two weeks of June. We're 10 after 6 right now on your Wednesday. The first manned launch of the Boeing Starliner is on the shelf again. What's caused the latest in this series of setbacks for the spacecraft? And NBC's The Voice crowned their season 25 winner last night. We'll tell you who won and the familiar face who was runner up. And we're getting ready for a string of days with afternoon and evening thunderstorms all the way through the holiday weekend. I'll walk you through each day hour by hour coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Gorgeous sunrise in progress right now. Pleasant temperatures too at 60 in Wilson. The whirly gigs are completely still, but they'll get uh, kicking a little later on this morning. 65 in Durham and 61 in Fayetteville. Out the door this morning just feels comfortable. We're going to see lots of sunshine for it today. Uh, we are gearing up for some scattered storms that start tomorrow and maybe with us every afternoon all the way through the holiday. We'll walk through Futurecast and uh, help you plan around that. One thing to plan for, it's going to be a little hotter this afternoon. It's pleasant this morning but by lunchtime temperatures will already be in the mid 80s and then nearly 90 for this afternoon. Tomorrow we may end up tying the hottest day that we've seen so far this year. I'll show you what that will look like and what it will feel like when we figure in the heat index. Ken? Early Elizabeth here in the WRO Traffic Center. We continue to monitor that serious crash on East Millbrook and Atlantic Avenue. You can see uh, East Millbrook right there completely shut down as well as uh, the entire swath of Atlantic Avenue as well. As an alternate route, depending on where you are, you might want to use Spring Forest Road. Also, we just got word of a crash on the I-40 ramp to eastbound, uh, those I-40 lanes near Jones Sausage Road. Check the sensors, not causing any major problems at this hour. <laughs> I want to bring you back into the WRL Live Center about that story I told you about a little bit ago. The Biden administration announcing that it will cancel student loans for another 160,000 borrowers there. This AP article kind of talks a little bit more about it. And the White House press briefing website also has more details with this. But the people that are included in this are enrolled in the president's income driven repayment plan. And those eligible also include through the public service forgiveness program. So we're talking about public service workers, teachers, nurses and or law enforcement. And it's also worth noting that people are becoming more eligible for loan cancellations as they approach 10 years of needing those loans. NASA is postponing the launch of Boeing Starliner spacecraft once again. That launch was planned for Saturday. NASA said engineers need more time to evaluate a helium leak. That leak was first detected during a launch attempt earlier this month that was scrapped. The Starliner is expected to take two astronauts to the International Space Station. Season 25 of The Voice has come to an end. This morning, we're hearing from the North Carolina, North Carolina native who did not win, but still got major credit. WRS Michelle McConaughey joins us now with more on the runner-up, Josh Sanders. Michelle. Yeah, Renee, Josh has so much to be proud of this morning, but it came down to a pair of singers for Coach Reba McIntyre. Josh Sanders came so close, but the Kannapolis native lost to Asher Havan. But Sanders won a lot of favor with fans who watched this season. He managed to beat out Goldsboro native Tay Lewis in a previous round. And despite the loss, Sanders says he feels so grateful for his time on the show. The people that are closest to me know this, that from the start, 
when I knew that Reba or learned that Reba was going to be a coach, I just I knew I knew her values, I knew her spirit and her faith. And I, I told my wife, I said, I want to sing a gospel song on live television with that woman right there. Sanders sang his heart out this season. He got to sing with Reba last night. And before the show aired, Sanders said on Instagram, no matter the outcome, I am a blessed man. Season 26 of The Voice airs this fall with two new coaches, Snoop Dogg and Michael Buble. They'll join Reba and Gwen Stefani. Thanks, Michelle. Today, military spouses on Fort Liberty have the opportunity to kickstart their careers. The Post is hosting a career and resource fair. There'll be free headshots for professional resumes, resume reviews, and opportunities to meet with employers. It's happening today from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Soldier and Family Readiness Group Center. You can pre-register on Eventbrite or at the door. Take a look at this. Flash flooding caused dangerous conditions for people living in Omaha. Multiple drivers had to be rescued from their cars yesterday morning. Uh, the Midwest has been pummeled with severe weather and that storm system will make its way toward us, bringing us unsettled weather for the holiday weekend. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center. We get one more day of some beautiful weather, though, and we'll make the most of it. We will. It's gorgeous out there right now. Take a live look at Goldsboro, looking at a pretty sunrise there. Um, Apex, Chapel Hill, with a pretty glow there under a completely clear skies. Chapel Hill's courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. And, of course, Fayetteville, there's our newsroom right there on Hay Street. We're tracking a slow front. We've been talking about it all week long. It's been back to the west. It has caused some, uh, some deadly severe weather across parts of the country. Once it moves here across the mountains, it will be weaker, and we're not looking at a lot of widespread chances for severe storms. We are under a level one risk for tomorrow. It's a 40% chance Thursday and Friday, a 50% chance Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But we're looking at afternoon and evening thunderstorms. You can see out ahead of our front some scattered storms, especially there around uh, Indiana. That will continue to lift northward, and the cold front gets closest to gets closer to us tomorrow, uh, close enough that it will likely help to produce some scattered storms. So there's lunchtime tomorrow, and we're pretty quiet at lunchtime. After lunchtime, we start to see some scattered storms popping up, starting in our northern counties, and then during the evening, spreading south and east. And again, we do have the potential for one or, one or two of those to produce some wind damage or possibly some hail. New this morning, we do have this level one risk for severe storms from Fayetteville northward, some heavy rain in pockets with some of these storms, and possibly some hail as well. We're not looking at widespread severe storms with this, but we'll be watching each day uh, to determine what our severe weather threat will be going forward. So we have afternoon and evening thunderstorms that start tomorrow. Here's a look at Friday. We're quiet in the morning uh, with some sunshine. Should be a pretty sunrise each of these days. And you're going to have a nice window of opportunity each day to enjoy some outside time. Now, Friday, a lot of folks are still at work and then headed out on the roads. And it may be that we'll see some scattered storms as folks are trying to head to their destination. Saturday morning, we're dry, but evening thunderstorms roll through. And then Sunday, same thing. Good chunk of dry time on Sunday uh, and then some afternoon and evening storms and we will repeat that again on Monday. So it's not going to be a washout of a weekend by any means. But we definitely have that chance of afternoon and evening storms uh, all the way through the weekend. Anywhere from uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch for the next several afternoons, but we'll continue to add to that threat as we get through the rest of the weekend. And you know, you may be out and about. If you don't have any good way to get weather information, if you can hear thunder, you're in danger of being struck by lightning and you need to go inside. If you can see an Anvil cloud, you know, a thunderstorm is headed your way and a wind shift also will signal the approach of some thunderstorms it tends to drop our temperatures. Speaking of dropping temperatures, we're not going to do that anytime soon. We climbed at 92 on Thursday and for Memorial Day itself, we'll see a high of 90 as well. Ken? At 620, Elizabeth, we continue to follow that breaking news of, at East Millbrook and Atlantic Avenue. Here's a look at what it looks like on the sensors. I want to give you a live look now at that intersection. Right now you can see the mangled vehicles, that red vehicle right there, that pickup truck both involved in, the, in this crash, as well as that UPS uh, uh, truck right there. Uh, WRL's Laura Levine is on that scene, and she will bring us a live report in the next half hour. It's a really tough situation out there, and as you can see, that intersection is completely shut down, as well as Atlantic Avenue. When you see purple on the map, that means that area is completely shut down. We're suggesting this morning that as an east-west alternate route, maybe Spring Forest Road, depending on where you are this morning, but avoid that Atlantic uh, Avenue, East Millbrook Road intersection all together. Elsewhere in the triangle, we see all the major routes are delay-free at this hour. 
Ken, thanks. Tonight you can get more answers about lead contamination in local parks. How Durham is working to fix the problem and how you can get your concerns addressed. And a new treat from McDonald's has people thinking about their grandma's reaction to the new Grandma McFlurry. Yes, that's what it's called. Coming up in What's Trending. This What's Trending report sponsored by Rug and Home. We finally know what makes up McDonald's Grandma McFlurry, and some people say it's pretty good. Ken Smith here now with What's Trending. Ken, we should have taste test. Oh, yeah. I know where I'm going for a treat later today. <laughs> now, people have been guessing for days about what could be in this strangely named treat. Well, it turns out it's vanilla soft serve with butterscotch crumbles and syrup. Many people who've tried it even can say it's pretty tasty, but they say it depends on how much you like butterscotch, and I love butterscotch. Mm. And, <laughs> and if you're familiar with McDonald's, whether the ice cream machine is working. You might wonder about the name. Originally, McDonald's uh, described it as a sweet treat with syrup and pieces of a hard candy that might taste like something you find in Grandma's purse, hence Grandma McFlurry. <laughs> oh. But we're in the South here, so I think it should be called Mima's McFlurry. I think, I think that right? makes sense. That and work. if you dip the fries into it, I mean, mm. showstopper. I love it. Mm. So listen, Caitlin Clark is in rare air. Her new endorsement deal is one that only Michael Jordan has ever had before. She's partnered with Wilson, the maker of the WNBA's official basketball. Jordan is the only other athlete who's been a brand ambassador for Wilson. Now, these are the, uh, you know, Wilson makes the game balls mm -hmm. as well, but these are the uh, commemorative edition. So, mm -hmm. you know, the opposing teams, wouldn't that be something if they had to play with the basketball with <laughs> Caitlin Clark on it? But no, these are uh, the special collector's items and pretty cool. The gold inlay right mm -hmm. there with her picture, number, name, oh, everything. That's cool. Really mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I love it. Ken, thank you. Peloton will reportedly no longer use Sean Diddy Combs' music on its playlist. It's also removing its Bad Boy Entertainment Artist series of classes, which use music from Diddy's record label. This comes after a video from 2016 surfaced, appearing to show Diddy kicking and shoving his girlfriend. A bill that would make it illegal to wear masks in public is hitting a wall in the state legislature. The next steps after a vote that's planned for today. New this morning, we have a level one risk for severe storms tomorrow. Tomorrow kicks off a long string of days with afternoon and evening thunderstorms. We'll walk through all of them coming up. And we're following this breaking news this morning in Raleigh. This is a live look right now at a serious crash. East Millbrook Road and Atlantic Avenue. That intersection is shut down. This is what it looks like right now. What we know about this crash that involved three drivers.